and welcome to today's video. So next on the bench we have a BBC Master Compact. Now I don't know if this works. I am going to be quite brazen and bold to make sure that, that is currently set to off. I'm literally just going to plug it in, power it on. Believe it or not, that's actually a good sign. Well, in my view it is anyway. Because first off, power's getting through to this unit. Second off, there's been no explosion from in there yet, although I expect some reefers will be past their best and they will pop quite alarmingly at some point. But it does seem to suggest for the minute that the problem is limited to the computer itself. So let's get started on dismantling this. Now I've never taken apart a master compact. I've taken apart plenty of masters and plenty of BBCs. Now I'm hoping that it's just going to be a case of a Phillips crosshead screwdriver which I'm just digging out now from the box of tools. There it is. And I'm hoping it's just four screws. There's one. Two. Three. And four over this side. That's one over this side. Are four. Never been inside one of these, so it'll be quite interesting to see how they actually make it all work. So I'll get these screws out of the way using the power of magnetism. How exciting! There's one, there's your other fella. There you go, let's put those to one side. Let's flip her up and Real. Look at that, there we are, there we are in. So let's disconnect this very ribbon heavy keyboard. And let's have a general mooch around on the motherboard itself and see what we have. It's actually very clean in here. That's Look, that looks very familiar. Sideway, very familiar. Very familiar. I'm guessing that's all sideways ROMs. So you can actually have additional ROMs in here for additional software packages. Um, master copy, that must be some built in application. Not sure what that one is. We have a few more in here. Nope, that's just a bit of sellotape. So I'm just trying to work out what these other chips are. One of them is going to be the CPU, which is VL65220. I'm not sure if that is an in-out control input output controller or if that is actually a CPU. There's another 6522 there. There's one there, Acon Computers, a specific Acon Computers chip. Now I thought these things actually had um onboard BIOS. Uh sorry, on not BIOS, CMOS with battery backup 
can't seem to find battery backup on here. So, because this has got quite a convoluted ribbon cable assembly, I'm wondering if the keyboard actually has more than the um, more than I'm initially giving it credit for. So let's remove the keyboard itself. The moment actually we can actually remove this keyboard completely and see if it powers up without it. Nothing in here looks dirty though. So it could literally just be that these ROMs need to be removed and reseated. I've seen that before with BBC Bs where if the ROMs are not seated correctly or if they got a bit of corrosion on the legs, they won't actually power up, it will sort of cause the machine just to beep like that continuously. Right, there's and hopefully that should be releasing the keyboard. Oh no, there's another couple. So another couple of screws. No, it literally just is a keyboard, so there's actually nothing special on there at all. However, what I will take the opportunity to do is to remove that the switch cleaner. And pop it back in again. That is strange. I honestly thought these had um, some kind of battery backup on them. I know the Masters did. Because you actually had on the Masters, you had a separate set of AA batteries that you plugged into the, um, the main motherboard. And then to replace them, you just replaced the battery pack. Done one of them before by um, soldering in soldering connections between a set of uh, triple A uh, double A's and then um, popping them in carefully. Let's pull out these uh, ROM chips. So this takes me back because you've got to do that. And you've got to be really careful whilst doing it, otherwise you can bend the legs. Hopefully, I haven't done too much damage to these. But they are quite dirty, which wouldn't help with our ability to work. So let's grab something I can use. The sandpaper should do it. In. Check that the pins are aligned. Check the other side. Right now for this one. So we'll do this. Dries up, gently dries up. One side than the other. There we are. 
need to gently pop those back. There we go. There we go. Give that a bit of a spruce with the switch cleaner, circuit cleaner, whatever. These bit of a sand up down. Sometimes the very act of just removing them and popping them back in actually can resolve a number of problems of these old old machines. So we'll pop that one back in. Make sure we go the correct way round because you've got a little notch there on the board and in the white pen writing you've also got a notch there which tells you pretty much what way it's got to go around so there we go now we'll do some of these ones so we'll do this large one here first Now the trick when you were removing this was to try and leave them out either end so that when you did it they come out in one piece and you don't actually damage the pins which it looks like there we did a fairly good job those look okay however we will give it a bit of a lube and a bit of a sand Lube, I mean clean, sorry. Bit of a sand down. There we go. There we go. There we go. Back in again. There we are. Now this one. The thing with these is when you are levering them up they will suddenly just pop. Which can be quite alarming if you're not ready for it. Okay. Clean, same with this. Nothing too extreme, just gently cleaning it. There we are, and tumpty tumpty tum, tumpty tum, tumpty tum, tumpty tum. Okay, back in again. So that's everything that I can see that I can remove. That I can do something with has been removed and cleaned. So let's bring back the base, which is basically the power supply and monitor stand. It's literally all this is. Also houses a floppy disk drive. In this case, it's a little three and a half inch one, which if I remember rightly, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a long time since I've looked into these, will hold 640Ks kilobytes worth of data, which for 
day when this machine was out it was actually quite a lot so you could get quite a lot of information on the disc especially when you're considering the old BBC Model B's you had 180 and 360 with DFS this is a DF ADFS advanced disc filing system right here we go so same story again Let's unplug the floppy bit and just try it there. Okay. Um, what else could we try? Could try disconnecting the keyboard actually. However, no, that won't do anything. But we'll see what it does. know if this will do anything probably won't but it's worth a go board out and let's examine it for dry joints so these are little screws of little plastic washers so keep plastic washers speaker and we need to come out like that and over so let's have a look let's see if there's anything obvious that's potentially causing us problems not that I can see of I've got to be honest the power connector is this here, there's no dry joints on that. Doesn't look like there's any problems with that at all, actually. So, clean the edge connector for the sake of it. There 
There we go. There we are, it's back in now. For sake of argument, let's move. Let's move this to another ROM socket. Doubtful that will do anything, but you never know. So normally, you have to have the um, the operating system ROM in a specific socket. So I would just be interested to see what that does. If it does anything. No worries. Pop that back in as it was. There we go. And let's reassemble the machine. So. Right, so I'm going to leave this here for the minute. What I'm going to do in the meantime is just do a bit of investigation, see if I can find anything online that may um, suggest why I'm experiencing this particular issue. I'm sure I've had it before on a master, and on the master it was just a case of um, uh, unseating those ROMs and reseating them, and then miraculously it all starts to work again. So I'm hoping it's that. It could be that I've got a Duff ROM. Who knows? It is an old machine. It has been sat around for a long time. But for the minute, I'm going to leave it there. And we'll revisit this one again soon. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've found this video interesting. If you do have any suggestions as to what the problem may be, please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. If you found this interesting don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified of whenever I make a future video or release a future video but for the moment thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time